Well, welcome to the session. I'm going to start off with a quick introduction to intangible cultural heritage with a slight focus on the UK and particularly Scotland because we are in Glasgow. So I'll start with a rather evocative definition of, of ICH, as I'll call it throughout this session for brevity. Um, it's a, a mechanism for selection display, a dance band, a hospital, um, hugely important to, to communities, and also a fundraising dinner dance party with colourful costumes, glaring spotlights, and rhythmic tunes. And here is another um, viewpoint from the former president of Mali, um, saying the protection of intangible heritage is a long struggle. So moving on to UNESCO, which defines intangible heritage as the living practices, representations, expressions, knowledge, skills, as well as the associated instruments, objects, artifacts and cultural spaces that communities, groups or individuals themselves recognise as part of their cultural heritage. It's central to identity. <clears throat> And an understanding of the intangible cultural heritage of different communities helps with intercultural dialogue and encourages mutual respect for other ways of life. Um, ICH's traditional, co co contemporary and living practices, it's inclusive and it's representative and depends on those whose knowledge of tradition, skills and customs are passed on to the rest of the community from generation to generation or on to other communities. It is community based. These practices are an important component of contemporary cultures um, and provide people with a sense of identity and continuity. They validate individual and collective senses of place, identity and collective memories. It recognises aspects of, of world heritage overlooked by the definition of heritage in the 1972 World Heritage Convention. It gives pride to the unrepresented and also gives status to non-monumental, non-material heritage, recognising the contribution of countries and cultures overlooked by the 1972 Convention. It provides a framework for dealing with the present and it can be used to reinforce the social and cultural values given to heritage and help to legitimise them. When state authorities place ICH on registers, it can attract international prestige and tourist income, but on the other hand, it may encourage the commodification of culture. Prestige, honour, recognition and attention generate pride and may encourage efforts to continue, um, transmit and even extend these traditions. However, state recognition control encourages the creation of consensus history, national identity, collective memories and social and cultural value. Regulation might encourage ICH, but there is this tension between creating theme parks and the conservation protection and safeguarding of ICH. Dissonant heritage, conflict and contested heritage, what may be comfortable and worthy to, to some will always be problematic to others. All heritage involves regulating and negotiating the meaning of the past and raises issues around the cultural and social politics of identity, belonging, and exclusion. On the right I've got an example of the destruction of Armenian cash cars carved cross stones by military forces in Azerbaijan. These cross stones act as a focal point for worship and as memorial stones. They're believed to possess holy powers and cash car craftsmanship is transmitted through families or from master to apprentice teaching traditional methods and patterns, but also encouraging regional distinctiveness and individual improvisation. They're created by pe craftspeople both in Armenia and communities in the Armenian diaspora. And UNESCO inscribed Kashgars 
and the associated transmission and craftsmanship on the representative list of intangible cultural heritage of humanity in 2010. In the UK, the UK has not ratified the UNESCO ICH convention. Um, particularly in England, there is a lack of understanding of the ideas and principles of ICH and an assumption that it doesn't apply to Western countries. Statements from some authorities, such as the Department for Culture, Media and Sport and English Heritage, which is now Historic England, um, suggests that ICH may not be relevant to the UK and that UK has no intangible heritage. So overall, there's a failure to recognise the legitimacy and relevance of intangible heritage. In Scotland, the situation is somewhat different. It's also different in Wales, but I haven't really got time to go into that here. The practices of non-Indigenous groups are considered equal to those of Indigenous groups. Elsewhere, ICH has been linked to exclusive ethno-nationalist and authorised heritage narratives, but in this case, inclusion really is emphasised. In 2008, um, Edinburgh Napier University and Museums in Gallery Scotland um, did an ICH in Scotland project and the report noted that, especially in Scotland and Wales, there is a willingness to adhere to best practice in the matter of safeguarding of ICH. This report promotes a community-centred and inclusive approach to ICH in terms of participation and diffusion and ethnicity. It puts heritage in the, in the context of a dynamic shared spatial and social identity. Um, and Scotland is not currently afforded the opportunity for UNESCO to officially recognise examples of heritage in Scotland as ICH. ICH raises questions of authenticity as practices evolve in the face of globalisation, cultural transformation, conflict and displacement. This, the images on the right show the Harris Tweed cottage industry. It's a unique handwoven cloth maintained by community collaboration and support. Um, it was first commercialised in the 1840s. Its trademark was registered in 1910 and it's currently undergoing a modern revival. Um, on the bottom is a picture of a pair of Converse All Stars from Japan, which use Harris tweed, which is a, a, a given that Harris has been producing textiles since for at least 4,000, if not five or 6,000 years, it's, it's quite a nice bit of continuity overall. So evolution is a, it's a natural process within the ICH spectrum, and the end results may be in some cases, the demise of traditions and practices that are no longer useful or symbolically meaningful. On the other hand, they can involve the ongoing transformation and recognition of living cultures. So moving on to the session outline, there has been a change of programme. Unfortunately, Axel Vidal hasn't been able to make it to talk about Argentina. So in her place, uh, we will start with Nadia Melko, who will talk about indigenous and Roman pottery in Switzerland and her work with modern day pottery craftsmen. Thank you.